Quattrovella here from uh, Velomobile NL, right? Correct. A four-wheeler. And so tell me a little bit about uh, about who this is for. Let's start with that. So the Quattrovello is really kind of, uh, I always try to put it, this is the Cadillac. It's the most comfortable of all of them we've got. It's got an air suspension in it, which we'll look at in a minute. Uh, it actually can have a back seat. I've carried my daughter around in it many times. Uh, it has a couple of different options on the, on the, on the top. Uh, but the most important thing is the four wheels, and it's incredibly stable. Now, I think I've heard you say, correct me if I'm wrong, that this, of, of all your Velomobiles, this is your favorite. Is that true to say? Yeah, so, you know, everybody asks that question. It's very common. What's, what, if you could only have one? Right. Well, then this is the one I usually tell them, and the, and the reason behind this is the most versatile. It's got a huge cargo space. It's not as fast as the Milan. It's probably, it's on par with the DF, but if, if it's just the one thing I can have, this is probably the one. Let's run the numbers on the Quattro Velo. Tell me a little bit about uh, the stats. Okay, so everybody, the first thing everybody wants to know about is how much does it weigh? So Quattro Velos run anywhere from about 65 pounds and change to about 75 pounds and change, depending on what you put on them. So that's about where they are. He's a little bit longer than six feet. And again, there's some differences, whether you're on the QV Plus or the QV. And of course, you can see he's not very tall. He's only about three foot tall at the highest point there on the turtle top. Doug, uh, we want to look a little bit uh, deeper into the Quattrovello. We want to take a look at the at uh, what's under the hood here, I guess, right? Sure, sure. Okay. So, so let's start with the back, the rear, the rear of the machine. Uh, you got my 360 camera on this one, which, which of course everybody's seen lots of videos of. You open it up here. There's a little Velcro strap that holds it in place that we just unlo uh, unlocked. So Gary, this is the rear access panel here that gets you to the rear drive panel, where your cassette and the rear brakes and the and the axle. Uh, tell me what we're looking at here. You're looking at the dri rear drive of the Quattrovello, which has a unique drive frame. It is a single axle, two wheel drive. So there's the axle goes all the way across from both drive wheels. The chain rings, which you have, an, I mean not chain rings, the cog set, which you have a normal derailleur for, is right here, a little bit offset. And there's a differential right here that's a, kind of a limited slip. So whichever wheel is slipping loses the power, and the one that's still got traction gets the power. So that's what makes it climb so well. It's got a dampening system in it. This is how it gets, part of the way it, it dampens this, the, uh, the road. There's one there and then another one down there. And in this particular case, this, one ha this particular model has rear brakes. So there's a, a stire brake here and a stire brake here on either axle. And that's controlled from a lever up front that we'll look at here in a minute. Uh, Doug, now we're looking in the main cockpit here. And what are, we, what are we gonna take a look at now? So right now we're looking at the rear suspension, which is a bellows system right here. It's got a little Schrader valve on the top that you inflate. And then that lets you set the suspension height and ride there in the rear. And it, you can see it compress when I push down on it. And that's how the rear suspension works. I know folks are wondering about the controls and steering mechanisms in a Velomobile because they're quite different. Can you uh, show us a little bit of how that works? Yes, Gary. There's, there's actually two different kinds of, of steering in a Velomobile. One of, them's, one of them we're going to show here is called a tiller steering. Okay. And I'm going to bring this down here. The tiller is free form. You can move it around. It's on a little universal joint there. To steer, you twist it. So you twist it to the left or twist it to the right, and that moves the wheels back and forth like a steering on a bike. This particular Velomobile has front and rear brakes. This is the front drum brakes right here. And then this is the rear disc brakes that are mounted on the rear axle. You also have a signal indicator for left and right and a little horn button right there. On this particular Velomobile, this is the shifter. So this is how you shift up and this is how you shift down gears with a little shifter there. And that changes just like a regular bike. It's a regular standard thumb shifter. It's just mounted in a little bit different location. Uh, maybe there's something to be learned from the uh, underside of the Velmobile, and you can tell us a little bit about uh, what's interesting about that. Yeah, Gary, so one thing about Velomobiles that makes them, makes them not only unique but very desirable is that the undercarriage, the drivetrain, the chain, the chain line, everything else, is all sealed up inside the bike. So it keeps it, you know, like in, in, in Ohio, they salt up the roads, everything gets corroded. Right? Well, on a Velomobile, everything is enclosed. So I can roll this over right quick and we can take a look. Mm -hmm. There is no exposed chain or drivetrain or anything like that uh, to, to get into the elements. But this is a wall. This is a, this particular model is uh, more of a touring one. It's set up with a soft suspension in the back, which we'll look at here in a minute, uh, and a suspension in the front too. Uh, this also has a roll-off 14-speed drive, which we'll, we'll talk to. When we pull it all apart, we'll, we'll talk about it. 
Uh, the walls are unique in this industry because they have a variety of options with the tails, with the noses, with the drivetrains. I mean, there's, there, you can really configure them kind of how you, you want. The other thing the WAS are known for, which, which is probably what the links we're going to spend some time with in a minute, is they're the, they, they can be almost completely disassembled so you can get to all the parts very easy to work on them. They can be down to about 57 pounds for this very sportive wall, which is carbon fiber. It's a little fragile, but it's, but it's there, which puts it down into that DF kind of category. It's it'd be very light. Uh, we've got one over here. I always show people I can pick it up with one, you know, with, with a couple of fingers on one hand, so it's very light. To a very heavy, you know, E-wall, which was going to be close to 100 pounds if it's car glass fiber instead of Kevlar or what have you. So a huge range of weight can be in there depending on what options are on them. Uh, and also because there's different noses and different tails, they can be anywhere from about five foot seven to almost seven feet tall. So there, there's quite a bit of, 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 of width variations in them depending on the nose and tail configurations. The height though stays about the same. Okay. So the height is the same, which is about the same as a QV, it's just a hair over three foot tall. One important thing about the wall is they have this opening like this for the manhole. So it's a little easier to get in out. We have one other one that has a different manhole too, but this got this this uh, hinged manhole cover here. Uh, and then there's a fairing that fits over the top of this. It closes it all the way up that you can slide in the back and, and keep in the, the vehicle with you, so which is also unique. So uh, let's look inside the cockpit here. Uh, tell me what you have here, Doug. So on this particular wow, we have a 14-speed roll-off, the shifter here. Oh, and by the way, this is the different kind of steering configuration. This is the tank steering, which is more what you'd see on a more traditional trike, where the steering is on both sides. Well, this is a tank steering. The shifter here is, uh, again, instead of a 14-speed roll-off. The brake is here and the parking brake's there. And in this particular wall, we have, a, we have a water bottle holder down here off to the side. So now on the other side of this, we have, uh, again, the this is the other half of the tank steering, but we have the headlight switch, the turn indicator switch, and the horn. <laughs> Section. section, yeah, okay. Uh, up, and, up the wall. and after you remove it, what do you have in there? What do you have in there is just this little wire connector right here, and actually you can see how, how thoughtful they are, this has been because they've got this little bungee cord to hold it out of the way when you're putting it on and off. But this is the uh, the uh, electrical neck con electrical connector for the back and the tail lights. Okay. And you have a flashing set and a brake light set. Now let's take a look at the rear end of the wow. Which uh, tell us what we have here. All right. In this particular wow, it's a soft tail wow, which means it has this little shock that's sitting right here um, that you can pump you pump up with a little Schrader valve on top, just like you would on like a mountain bike shock. In fact, that's that's where this shock came from. Um, there's the electrical connector that we saw a minute ago from the bulkhead. And then down here on this wall is a 14. This is the 14 speed roll off hub. So right here, as you can see, and then there's the shifting cables on the left side of this that go down to that little shifter that runs the the, the uh, planetary gears for the roll off. And we're up to the nose of the wow, and what's inside this? So this is one of the nose cones of the wow, and inside of that is the bracket for the lights. This is the front the front lights. There's a, there's two of them here, uh, and then this little thing right here is the horn. So each one of these has a little horn on them, and it's on the outside, because if it was on the inside, it'd make really loud for you and not the guys outside where it needs to be. Uh, and then along the bottom here is the electrical connect connection for this. So Gary, on the nose of the wall, what we have here is, this one's a single chain ring, because again, it's got a roll off in it. Uh, if it had a derailleur, it would be mounted here. Um, this assembly right here is a, a movable bottom bracket. So you adjust the leg length on the wall, like you would move a boom on a regular recumbent. You move this in and out. That's how you adjust the length for the rider. Uh, and then this one was set up for somebody pretty short, so the, for the bottom bracket is scooted in pretty close right now. Uh, and then the other thing to point out is that's where you find the serial number on this bike is actually here. It's actually a couple of places, but this is the, the one you point people to. Before we start talking about the DF here, our next Velmobile, let's take a step back and talk about the reasons for buying a, vel a Velomobile in the first place. So why would the average recumbent rider who's watching this video right now come in here and purchase a Velomobile at all? What's the reason for doing that? Well, Gary, Gary the, the main reason is uh, that uh, 
you have a weather protection. So you've got uh, uh, an all-weather vehicle. It's it's protected against the heat, protects the cold, against the rain, against sleet, what have you. Um, I've personally ridden in all sorts of, of weather. We've talked about on the show before, in some extremely hot weather and extremely cold weather. So in the hot weather, it's like the number one question I get asked around here, particularly in the summer, is, aren't you really hot? And the answer is, no, I'm actually less hot than I would be on a trike. And, and the reason for that is, 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 is actually very simple. I'm in the shade and I have airflow. The, the second reason is safety. All right, we've talked about my own personal uh, issues and why I got into the velomobiles too. But you're basically riding in a bicycle helmet. I mean, it's, it's, it's carbon fiber, fiberglass, Kevlar types, depending on the build. Uh, and it's very strong. In fact, I, I got a piece of this. I had one of the manufacturers build me so I could show it to customers. This is what these things are made out of. I mean, you can hit, you can bend. It's not going anywhere. And imagine what this is like between your skin and something that hits you or the ground or anything like that. So it's, it's, it's fairly protected against there. The last thing about it, and, 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 and a lot of the reasons people get these things, of course, they're fast. Mm -hmm. um, so and let's talk about that for a second because that's another piece of thing you get asked a lot is how fast can you go? Uh, you can go faster downhill than you want to go. On a flat road uh, at 150 watts, which is a pretty fit but average rider, mm -hmm. uh, a trike will get up to about 15, 16 miles an hour. And that's about where you plateau out. And I mean, again, there's some variability, but that's about where it is. On a very velomobile, that same 150 watts of, uh, of, of power will keep you at 20 miles an hour. So it's a huge jump in that from a regular recumbent or trike. So in general, I think you're suggesting that this is uh, for serious riders. Uh, perhaps commuters uh, would be one. Yeah, as a car replacement. A lot of people do use them as car replacements. Um, the best time trial bike with the best time trial guy with all the fitness world still can't beat an average Velomobile guy. Right. They're just that much faster. All right, so the DF is really one of the lightest sporty Velomobiles out there. Uh, they're coming in between 55 to 60 pounds, again, depending on weight. So that's a little lower than the other ones, except for the Sportive Wall. Uh, so they're a little bit lighter. Uh, you can notice two things about this one right away. One is, out of the other Velomobiles we looked at, this has open wheels on the front. So the wheels are available to you. Uh, it's one bolt that holds it on the axle. So they're very fast to change the wheels. The other thing about this one is that it has a nice cargo deck in the back. It's not nearly the cargo capacity of the Quattrovelo, but it's really pretty good for basic commuting um, and some camping or whatever for a single person. So you see people using them for that, particularly there. But the main reason this one is, is it's an incredibly stiff frame. And so they climb very fast. Numbers again with 55 to 60 pounds, depending on what you put in it. Uh, it is open wheeled, which is a little different. It is just a hair over six foot tall. And there isn't another one. Six foot long. Six foot long, yeah. Uh -huh. It's tall because they think about standing up on their ends. But right, yeah, right. that's how you get them in an elevator. You stand them up on your ends. Right. Uh, the, uh, it, the height is a little lower. This one's right at three foot. So you can see if we had the other one up here next to it, you'd see it's a little taller. So it's a little bit lower. Uh, it's also, if you were to be able to look at this, this angle from here to here, there's not as much of a turtle top either. So you're sitting a little lower in the cockpit. Also on this one, the accessibility is different. So the other ones we show, we, to we show how you take a, a, a wall apart. We show how you get to a QV, but the DF, the bottom is completely solid. There are no openings and there is no way to open the bottom of okay. the DF. So they have an access top at the front, which we'll show in a minute, and an access to the side to get the rear derailleur. Okay, let's take a look at those. All right, Doug, the uh, access panel on the top is off. Yeah, Shall three we take... days later, we have the access panel. <laughs> yeah, it takes a while. Let's take a look inside, what do you think? All right, so what we have in here uh, is the DF's interior, and um, this one has a dual compact cassette drive so it's got both a little ring and a big ring and what's interesting about that is the big step there so that is a 34 and that's a 61 and that's a big climb for a regular road bike you wouldn't be able to get away with this but the angle of this derailleur is such that you can although it takes a lot of tuning and a lot of hard work what's really interesting with this we talked about this before was this sock so this is where the air comes into this sealed compartment because remember there's no footholds in this one so down here is where i have the sock now there's a hole here which is the static air input port which brings air in from the front so if, if we can walk around to the front of the velomobile and you look down at the headlights 
that's where the air comes into the cockpit. So right here where these headlights is, that's a hole, goes all the way through and empties out just behind the bottom bracket, which has the effect of going all the way across your front of your body, just like a trike would. What if you had to change a tire on a DF, for instance? What can you show us so, there? So, Gary, I've actually done this before, and you need this. Okay. You need a helmet. So yeah. normally you don't ride with these things, yeah. but uh, they're real useful in this particular situation. All right. Because you stick Let them under the uh, bill and hold it up. Oh, so like I don't that. even need to hold it up. You don't right. need to hold it up at all. And so now we just come down here. We've got one little screw. Just like this, out it comes. And the tire's off and you're done. So now you've got the tire in your hand. And what's more important is we can now see the inside of this, which is kind of interesting, because almost all the automobiles use the same system. So down here, we have the Sterney Archer brakes. This is a 90 millimeter set. And we have these McPherson struts, which is, makes up the suspension. And every automobile we've seen today uses the same suspension system. So here's how you, th this is how you set the alignment in the camber caster and then the toe in, toe in, and then this is the brakes, and then this is this McPherson strut, and this little wire gadget thingy here is for the uh, speedometer that's on the wheel magnet. Well, this is a Mousson. Okay. And, and unlike the other Velomobiles we've looked at before, this is, the, uh, this is a French Velomobile. It's made in France by a company called JV Cycles. And as far as I know, this is still the only one in the United States. Uh, they're absolutely gorgeous uh, machines, as you can see, and they have a couple of features that you don't have in any other Velomobile. Uh, the biggest feature that you have on this particular bike is the ease of entry and exit. Mm -hmm. So like all the other ones, you climb into the manhole cover, uh, manhole in different ways. This one, you open the whole top end. And that's how you work on it. That's how you do it. The whole thing opens up like that so you can get yeah, to all the pieces. Whole spacious area. Whole spacious area in there. Most everything else is kind of the same. It has a tiller steering. It has the same batteries kind of system for the lights and what have you. Although the integrated lights are just gorgeous like everything else on this vehicle. Uh, they're really well designed. It has a little bit different shape here. Um, it's hard to see here. We'll show it in a minute. But it has an air, a, a, an air duct built into the fairing. And that's how you get the air into this one. Um, and... This particular model has a roll-off, so it's also got a 14-speed uh, speed, uh, shifter on it, uh, very similar to the wall we saw earlier. Uh, and the last thing about this one that's, that's kind of unique on it is it has a double-sided suspension. So on the other Velomobiles we've looked at so far, we, they've all had single-sided rear wheels. They call them swing arms. So the rear wheel is mounted on a axle that's only on one side. Uh, in the, the mountain bike world, they call them lefties. So th this one has it mounted on both sides, so it uses a standard rear wheel with a standard rear wheel skewer. So when you take the rear wheel out of this one, it actually just uses normal bike parts there, and you just pop it, open it up, and drop it like a, a bike would. Very convenient. So let's get a closer look at uh, that air duct you talked about and maybe the inside. Yeah. Point out to where that comes through here. All right, so right here, Gary, is where the air comes on this one. So we looked at the, at, at the DF. The DF has it down by the headlights. This one has this duct right here where the air comes actually through the whole frontal fairing up in there, and it has a huge airflow in it. Okay. And not only is it, you know, got the airflow that you would normally have in this, the, the angle of this is such that it actually sucks a lot of the air through, and so you get a huge amount of airflow through there. It keeps you very cool. Um, you can't. You close it by a little piece of foam rubber. So I'll basically, close it off. so uh -huh. when you would close it off, you actually close the fairing down on a piece of clo close rub foam rubber, and it seals it. Unlike my dirty sock that I used on the other one, uh, this it's a little one, more elegant uh, a little bit more solution. But these are the French, of course. These are the French, so it's much more elegant, uh, and it does work quite well. Okay. And then, and then let's take a look at the hatch here. So let's open it up. And again, this one's one you can step in and out of very easily. Uh -huh. And so on this one, you can open up the, uh, the, the hatch, and then you can get down to all the bike parts. This one also has a schlumps drive up here at the front, which is this little button here on the bottom bracket that you, with the end of the crank arm there that you push to get a, planetary, uh, a, a reduction gear. And then it's got a chain line here. There's an idler pulling one heavy. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty standard Velomobile drivetrain from that, from that aspect. Okay. And again, the moving bottom bracket for adjusting driver length and all that. And then the water bottle cage over here. What do we have down here? We have a Milan GT, uh, which is the, the medium size now. It used, used to be the largest. Now there's an MX, which is larger. Uh, but this is the, large, this is the medium size Milan. Um, this is the fastest Velomobile in the store by far. Uh, it's noticeably quicker than the other ones. Um, 
it's also a little heavier. This, these start out at about 70 pounds. So, and this is a German... Uh, yeah, so this particular one's got some interesting history there. It is a, it's German-designed. They are still made by a company called Radar Works in Germany. But there's also a gentleman in, in Canada who is making them. And this, this particular one was made in Canada. Okay. Uh, and this is actually one of my older velomobiles. Uh, and it has a lot of history in it. Uh, it's probably got about 30,000 miles on it now, rough give or take. So the Mon, this particular Mon has two covers on it. This one's kind of an open summer cover. Uh, it has an air duct in it that, that we kind of carved into it. Uh, but it opens up pretty wide. You still have to step into the manhole like you do with some of the other ones, but the manhole on this one's much larger. Uh, okay, Doug, let's talk about uh, stats, numbers for the Milan now. Sure, Gary. So like I said, this one's a little heavier. Uh, I mean, what's interesting about velomobiles is weight doesn't matter as much as aerodynamics. This one's much more aerodynamic, but she starts out at about 70 pounds, which is pretty much on the top end of a lot of them until you get to the quattro velos with a lot of options. Mm -hmm. uh, lengthwise, she's a little longer and a little skinnier. So lengthwise, she's close to almost seven feet long. And she's a little more narrow, though. So most of the ones we've looked at before have been almost three feet to three and a half feet wide. This one's down about two and a half feet wide. So it's, even for a big velomobile, this one's a little bit got a more narrow track, which, of course, helps again with aerodynamics. It also tapers back to a point. Right. So that's the, a unique feature of this one is that it, it drops off to a, to a point that's only about this big. It's only about an inch at the end, where most of the other ones were two or three inches big. So that's actually another part of the aerodynamics on this one. Okay. And I also noticed that it's a little lower to the ground, the it height? Is, it uh, is a little lower ground. This is also the lowest to the ground one. Everything's been around three feet, and this one's about two and a half feet. It's got about four or five inches lower to the ground. The other thing about it is when you look at the bottom of it, it's very low to the ground. And I always joke about this one is if there's anything on the road at all and you have this velomobile, you'll hit it. Because the, the standard the standard height, road yeah. height on this one is only about an inch and a half. Let's uh, let's take a look uh, underneath the hood here. Okay, so a lot like the Mulsanne, this has a different, it has an opening hatch, uh -huh. that this hatch will open, but like all the other Dutch velomobiles that we've looked at in the Czechoslovakian one, you still have to climb in. So this one opens up with a much wider manhole, which makes it a little easier to get it in and out of, but you're still climbing in. So there's a little trade-off of, of, of things, a little bit different design. Uh, the other thing this one has, which is really interesting, we'll show this a little bit better in the other direction, but this little piece of wood right here is actually a little flapper that helps you hold this up. So if you want air, you can flip it one way and it'll lift the whole hood up a hair so that you've got this, the duct work that, you, that we saw similar to what the Mulsanne has Let's just has do had. that right this second. Why don't okay. we do that? Go ahead. So, and so right now it's, it's, it's in the up position. So I'm going to close it with this up. And then over here, you can see that this thing has this duct here that you can probably see the light through now, which, ha it, which is where the air comes through. And now when I go in here and I'll, I'll close it, let me flip this lever the other direction. And now we raise it down, it'll flatten out completely and snug down so that it's no more aerodynamic and you don't have that uh, opening anymore for the air. The, the main feature on this one that's a little different on this is the uh, footwells, is one's open and one's closed. A lot of automobiles have two footwells that are either open or two closed, but on this one the designers decided that one was aerodynamic, and so you actually have another one you can stick in there with Velcro and cover it. But the real difference on this one was kind of how you mounted the seat. A lot of the automobiles held the seat mounted on posts, uh, and they have little things that you move in and out to, to do adjustments. On this one, the seat's actually sitting on the, on the frame, and it just comes right out. You'll also notice on this one, somebody's been at it with a drill, because uh, one of the things I found out, and you can't really see it in my other automobiles, but you can see it in this one, I punched a bunch of holes in the back of it because I sweat on the, there, and I needed a way to get rid of the sweat and get some back ventilation. It looks like the uh, steering, uh, is that tank steering? What do you have on this? Yeah, actually, these came with either tank steering or tiller. They're the only one I know of that you could get one or the other. You could choose which one you want. Everybody else has one or the other. This one has the tank steering, and this one's kind of been modified a little bit because the, the Milan doesn't come with a horn, and it doesn't have a bell on it. A lot of the other ones have horns and bells, so I actually had to put a little horn. There's a little button here for the horn. And then I moved the indicator buttons up here where I could get to them easier. So this one has a tank steering. It's got the parking brake on one side uh, in, in there. And then it has the shifters on both sides. So it's got a standard chain ring and, and uh, cassette set up just like any other road bike would have. Uh, the only difference with this one is they're bigger. 
So like my uh, DF, uh, this one tops. This one actually has a 65 on the top end and a 41 on the bottom. So it's a little bit bigger set of chain rings. Okay. Tell me a little bit about the uh, the mango we have here. All right. Well, so Gary, this is the Velomobile that started it all. This was my very first Velomobile. I, I purchased it, purchased it from Jim Snyder at Ride South, uh, and he and I have a, a probably a, the the same war story from either end of trying to get it in here and then getting it all debugged and what have you because it was it was quite a journey. Uh, the Mango has a couple of unique defining features. Um, th they're a little heavier. Again, this is in the 70 pound range, but they're also very short. And so it's hard to see this on camera, I'm sure, but this one, you know, most of the ones we've had have been six, seven feet long. This one's five feet long. So it's a lot shorter. I mean, if we stand this up on the end, it's about right here on me. Mm -hmm. uh, we've actually gotten this in my wife's Equinox. So you can carry it around in a lot of things. Uh, and who makes the Mango? Oh, this is made by Center. If I remember correctly, hanging weight on this one was 72, mm -hmm. and it's a it's back to that three foot height again. So it's back up in, in the three foot height with all the rest of them are so you, there except for the Milan. Uh, this one has a mid drive, which we'll talk about here in a minute when we can look at the inside of it. Uh, it's also got a very rounded nose, which is a little different. Uh, the the Quest and the Mango and the Strata all kind of share the same her the pedigree there. One other thing important about a Mango, which was the big sell point uh, when I was looking at it is that it uses 20 inch wheels all the way around. So instead of having a 26 or a 700 C in the back, like a lot of them do, this has 20s all the way around like a Quattrovello. Let's take a look inside the copy and, uh, and, okay, so and this, tell us this some. Mango is, again, this was my first mango and it, it's been on your show before because it has all the lights and all the other stuff. So there's a lot of wiring in here that has uh, evolved over time for both the accessories and other things I've done in a big power distribution system and things like that. Uh, it has tiller steering and a single set of front brakes uh, like we've seen on the other Velomobiles. Uh, this one has a dual front chain ring, which we've seen on, uh, on a couple of Velomobiles, but it also has a mid drive, which I'm going to reach down and, and open up in a second to show you how that works. Uh, a pa a, an integrated electrical system, like almost all the other ones, and then all my funny stuff on the back. But it has a built-in bell, which is a little different. Some of them don't have bells, some of them do. The mangoes actually came with these bells. And uh, a little string to, to do that. It has bar end shifters and it has my holy seat. And so this seat has been attacked with a, uh, a hole cutter in the past. So unlike the other Velomobiles that have more traditional rear wheel drive systems, uh, the Mango has its primary cassette in the middle. So it's easier, it's easy to get to. Uh, the derailleur is down here and it shares a little pedigree of the Hilgo because this is what they designed the Hilgo after it has that unique linear drive we've seen on the, on the show. Uh, the chain line, you can see as this one is exposed. So uh, the older and the newer ones, they all use chain tubes and things like this. On this one, we have a, a chain line that is completely exposed internal to the Velomobile, uh, not to the outside, of course, but inside the Velomobile. So you can actually see a really good display of what these chains look like and the idlers and stuff that are involved in it. Uh, and then it goes to a rear derailleur on a rear cog, like a, a single speed on this side. So let me reach down there and, and get this. Again, this is, this is my light controller sitting in here, but I will take this open and you can see how this is set in here. And then that's basically a rear disc, a rear cassette that's been modified uh, for a single speed and that's how she works. And so it's a single speed that goes all the way back to a single speed rear hub on the back. So there you go, that is a Mango.